Well, today let's talk about the genius that is Richard Feynman, a person whose ideas I and I'm sure many others idolize. I say his ideas, not the person himself, the reason for which would unfold in the coming section of the video. Feynman was a Nobel Prize winning theoretical physicist who is arguably one of the greatest minds of the 20th century. He made contributions primarily in the field of quantum electrodynamics for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1965 along with some contributions in other fields such as particle physics and quantum computing. Before we get to know him a little better, let's talk about why is he so famous. Well, great minds are generally not great explainers, but Feynman was an exception. He was a prolific teacher and was known to communicate complex ideas in physics even to the general public. He believed it was his duty as a person and not just as a scientist to inform the masses about the fascinating scientific breakthroughs of those times. In addition, he was a solid prankster. It is known that while working for the Manhattan Project, that is a project that was uh, designed for uh, making of nuclear bombs, he used to play pranks on other scientists by guessing their codes to their safety locks and then he used to hide their documents and make them think that some kind of spies have come and so stolen those documents. In addition, Feynman liked playing bongos. Sheldon, it's three o'clock in the morning. Three in the morning is a good time for bongos. <laughs> I was sleeping. Leonard sleeps while I play bongos. He liked painting and also was a womanizer. Thus, he broke a lot of stereotypes associated with conventional scientists. He had an extraordinary mind, exceptional teaching skills, a great sense of humor, and a different approach to things which made him stand out among others. His childhood though was pretty ordinary. He was an average child but had a deep interest in mathematics, a field in which he did really well. His father always encouraged him to challenge the conventional wisdom. In an interview, he shares a piece from his childhood wherein he is walking with his father beside a lake and they see a group of birds. Now Feynman being a curious kid asks his father about the name of the birds. The father answers Feynman by telling the name of the birds in five different languages but later on he says something which had a big impact or you can say a profound impact on Feynman. He goes on to say that even though you know the name of the birds in five different languages, yet you know nothing about the bird itself. Similar to what I advise you about name reactions, the name of the reaction is not that important but the mechanism behind it is. Anyway, he completed his PhD in physics before he was assigned to work on the Manhattan project. At the project, he had the privilege to meet some of the greatest scientists of those times like Niels Bohr and Oppenheimer. He also recalls that how other scientists were in awe of Oppenheimer and Niels Bohr and therefore did not say anything against them. But Feynman was a frank person. Whenever he thought that any one of them is incorrect, he would always point that out. Post the project, he had a brief stint at Cornell before he finally settled and joined as a professor at the California Institute of Technology. He tried to improve the teaching over there at the undergraduate level and was against rote learning. He was also a firm believer of new and unconventional ideas. Often during his lectures, he used to back his likeness towards unconventional ideas. In one of his lectures, he gives an example, an hypothetical example. He says that Mayans in the ancient times could calculate the time of the eclipse to a very accurate level. Now, they, how they did that was they accurately calculated the time of the sunrise, the time of the sunset, of when the moon appears in the sky and so on and so forth. Now let's say a boy studying in school comes up to them and says, well, I have a model behind why the eclipse happens. He says that the sun, the moon and the earth, they, are, they come in a one straight line and that is why the eclipse happens. Now his idea is definitely correct. But if the Mayans ask him how accurate he is with the calculations or how precisely he can say when the eclipse will occur and the student does not know the answer to it or it is not very accurate, that does not make his uh, idea any less of than that of Mayans. That means that the preciseness or the accurateness behind a particular idea does not define whether it is scientifically valid or invalid. In his Nobel Prize lecture in 1965, he emphasizes this again. 
He says that if a student in a class follows the current fashion of expressing a thought or a theory, then the number of hypotheses generated would be limited. Now the answer may very well lie in the fashionable direction where every student is going. But what if the answer lies in the another direction? Which student or who will is going to find that? That is a very big question. Now these were some of the ideas of Richard Feynman and there are two quotes which I personally love which I would like to share with you which de define him as a person. The first of his quotes says that I don't feel frightened by not knowing things, by being lost in the mysterious universe without any purpose. That basically tells me that Feynman was not afraid not to know things. He always embraced not knowing things and would always look for answers. The second of his co quote says that if anyone could not explain something simply, you, you really don't understand it. This is one way of saying that Feynman did believe that everything had a simplistic answer and that it is just not the right way if you are not going to find the simple solution to it. Feynman did do a lot for science and his ideas and work will remain an inspiration to many other generations to come. But since he was human, he had certain shortcomings as well. He is very often remarked to be a sexist and he would, that he would always call a girl to get her soup irrespective of her designation. There are many other instances where you would find his sexist remarks, for example in his book itself, Surely You Are Joking Mr. Feynman, very often can you see certain sexist remarks. Now people are complicated like I said and have their own shortcomings which actually make them human. That's why I always and would always sincerely advise you to idolize ideas of a person and not the person himself or herself. With this, I would end the video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give this video a big thumbs up and if you want me to make more such videos, please let me know in the comment section how you found this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in another video.